Good morning, this is Dave Pearson and my wife Evelyn. Welcome to the program that seeks to encourage and lift your spirit. In today's world, we can conquer any obstacles in life, no matter what they might be, through the power of the love of God. Stay with us. You'll be blessed, challenged, and inspired by God's message of hope. Good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Dave Pearson, and you're listening to Saturdays with Dave and Evelyn. Good morning. We welcome all of our listeners, whether you're listening to us over the radio towers or over the internet from some part of the world. We welcome you all. It says in Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart with all diligence. Wow, especially if Jesus is the treasure of your heart. Nestor Torres starts us off with a great song of that same title, Treasures of the Heart. That was Nestor Torres playing Treasures of the Heart so beautifully. And that's from the album of the same name, Treasures of the Heart. There's just something fun about a flute. You know, when someone plays the flute, I like that. And Nestor does a great job. Well, let's get right into our title today. You don't want to miss this program. Even call a friend to encourage them 
maybe with their New Year's resolutions, things that you've done so far. How's it going? Well, I have some this year, sweetheart. I think you do as well. And um, you've come to the right place if you want some encouragement on breaking bad habits. That's right. That's our topic for today. And we're using some material by Christian Equippers International, Breaking Bad Habits by William R. Kimball. Life is filled with habits, some good, some not so good. We are creatures of habit. We all manage to acquire a host of habits in the course of of a lifetime. Many habits are innocent, unnoticeable, and of little consequence. However, some habits are deadly, obvious, and of major consequence to our lives. When we embrace Christ, we renounce a life of sinful habits and practices. But many Christians find it difficult to break old habits and forsake well-established patterns. So we're going to be looking at how to break bad habits, habits that draw us away from the will of God. So the first question has to be asked, Evelyn, what is a habit? A habit is an established practice, tendency, or manner of behavior. It is a behavioral pattern which is acquired through frequent repetition. A habit implies something which we have learned to do unconsciously and often compulsively. It is a life pattern which has been reinforced through repeated use. A habit can be harmless or life-threatening. It can range from a facial mannerism to something as deeply ingrained as a character weakness. It can involve something as simple as putting the right shoe on first to something as serious as drug addiction. How important are habits? Habits can be extremely important. They often have a tremendous impact upon the course of our lives. They can even affect our eternal destiny. And here's how. Sow a thought, reap a deed. Sow a deed, reap a habit. Sow a habit, reap a personality. Sow a personality, reap a destiny. Since our habits can have such a significant impact upon our lives, we must not ignore them or take them lightly. Those habits which are beneficial need to be appreciated and reinforced. Those habits which are detrimental need to be carefully examined and eliminated. Wow, Dave, eliminating your habits that are detrimental and leading you away from the will of God. I love that one song we sing in church or even when we were children. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. And when someone approaches us, maybe peer pressure for the young people, uh, come on, let's smoke this, let's slip over here. And you can say to them, a great line is, I've already decided not to. I've already decided not to means that you've made a decision. And um, that's a great line to remember. Challenge, the challenge of conquering habits. And really, when I think about this, Evelyn, the challenge of conquering habits, it's a test of our loyalty to God. Mm -hmm. And also, I think of the verse that tells us we need to walk circumspectly. We need to be aware of this because it's so ingrained, something we do unconsciously. We may not even be aware that we have this habit. So that's sometimes a good friend or a family member can be pointing that out to you. Sometimes that's not received well, but we need to appreciate when people point things out to us that we can't see ourselves. So the challenge of overcoming destructive habits can be a formidable obstacle. Some habits are so firmly established in our lives that they seem like insurmountable barriers. But there's great news. God can break down those walls of opposition. I have a challenge for us as well. When we think about the scripture, when it was talking about in Matthew, the strong man, and how our habits can be so strong, like a strong man. It says, bind the strong man in Matthew. But I have another idea here as well. Starve the strong man. (laughs) Give yourself a 30-day challenge. No magazines, no DVDs, no other things that will be in the way to stop you from serving the Lord. Romans 13, 14 has to be mentioned here. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. So I'm starving the old way, 
the old habit. And you feed the flesh, it reaps corruption. So we cannot serve two masters. That's right. Habits sometimes appear to be areas which are impossible to change. The prophet Jeremiah presented a question which appropriately characterizes the dilemma which we sometimes encounter when confronting the challenge of breaking bad habits. Can an Ethiopian change his skin, or a leopard its spots? Neither can you do good who are accustomed to doing evil. That's from Jeremiah 13.23. So we really do need the Lord's help to help us in conquering bad habits. If the truth were known, some of our habits can be a source of frustration. They really can be. When you're trying to break a habit, you know it's something you don't want in your life and you can't get rid of it. It can be so frustrating. So the struggle of wrestling with habits can often produce a deep sense of frustration. The difficulty of achieving a permanent victory over alcoholism, drug dependence, and smoking can become a grueling experience. Our previous inabilities to defeat sinful habits can create an overwhelming sense of hopelessness and despair. Those who have sought to overcome such habits have soon discovered that they are not always easy to defeat. It is not a problem which can be solved with simplistic answers or quick fix remedies. However, it is a problem which can be successfully answered through Christ. Praise the Lord. So, Evelyn, I think the Lord wants us to get our hopes up. What do you think? I think so, too. Well, when we get back from our break, we're going to continue our talk on breaking bad habits. Call someone. Let them know that this message is for them to be encouraged. We'll be right back. Keep up your guard for Christ, says Rev. Dave Pearson, a fifth-degree black belt in karate who uses biblical principles and martial arts to teach students to develop a physical and spiritual guard. Are you looking for a Christian-based martial arts program? There may be one near you. Masters Academy has nine locations in the Chicagoland area. Hi, this is Karate Dave. I've been teaching in the Chicagoland area for over 20 years, and my course details include basic self-defense training with Christian living applications and weekly Bible challenge and prayer to inspire a closer walk with Christ. This unique system of martial arts unites Tang Soo Do Karate, Judo, Jiu Jitsu Sport Karate, and street survival techniques that provide a fast, effective method of self-defense. Come visit the class for yourself and find out why so many Christian families have made Masters of Academy, the believer's choice. Call today, 630-567-9188. Visit my website at karatedave.org. You're listening to Saturdays with Dave and Evelyn. Welcome, everyone, and good morning. We're continuing our talk on breaking bad habits, but first, let's listen to the chapel choir and orchestra sing so wonderfully for us, Trading My Sorrows. Maybe we can even say we're trading our habits. Thank the Lord.
That was the chapel choir and orchestra from the First Baptist Church of Dallas, and that's their high schoolers. And they were singing Trading My Sorrows. It was from their 2009 tour, which was right here in Chicago. I picked that song, Evelyn, because I want to be a yes Christian, not no Lord, no Lord, no, no, no. That sounds like the right way that you should be, a yes Christian. So we are looking at some material by Christian Equippers, Breaking Bad Habits, written by William R. Kimball. So we were just talking about the frustration of bad habits. Where is a great question for us. Is there genuine hope? Yes. Before we can successfully deal with sinful habits, we must understand that there's no hopeless situations with Christ. Our habits are no exception. In 1 Corinthians 6, verses 9 and 10, Paul lists the sinful practices which the Corinthians had been habitually involved in. He included such things as drunkenness and sexual immorality and thievery. However, in verse 11, he followed with this important statement, And such were some of you. This verse is a strong encouragement for all those seeking a lasting release from life-dominating habits. The wording is in the past tense, were. Praise the Lord. Paul reveals that God has made it possible to overcome what seems to be impossible, our old ways. Boy, I tell you, I like that phrase I picked up a while back, sweetheart. It says, I will do what's possible. I'll ask God to do the impossible. That's right. Jesus didn't just provide a temporary halfway solution. He gives a permanent victory over every conceivable practice. If he could do it for them, the First Corinthians Christians, he can do the same for us. And then the other question is, is there a solution? Absolutely. This is the guarantee of the scripture. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, Philippians 4.13. So uh, as you've tripped before and fallen down, don't confuse a single defeat to a final defeat. That's an important distinction, Dave. So Scripture tells us that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. However, some Christians have convinced themselves that this is not possible. They have made so many unsuccessful attempts to overcome their habits that they have resigned themselves to failure. They have defeated themselves even before they begin. We may have lost a few battles, but we have not lost the war. In spite of our previous failures, we must not settle for total defeat. We must recommit ourselves to follow God's divine instructions for victory. One thing we've mentioned several times when we do material by Christian equippers, it's in a booklet, and they often have little pictures in the booklet. So on this page where we're talking about, is there a solution to breaking bad habits? There's a picture of Jesus Christ on the cross. You want to get from this, sweetheart? While he was on the cross, he had our sinful habits on his mind, and he died for those to give us victory. Praise God. That's right. So not only did he die for them for eternity, so our, our sins will not be held against us, but he also died for be able to have victory over our sins during our lifetime. And be encouraged, dear friend, with First Peter 3.12. The eyes of the Lord watch over those who do right, and his ears are open to their prayers. So we're seeking a scriptural solution, looking through the Bible to try and figure out how to break bad habits. So let's look at some scriptural steps for achieving a complete and permanent victory over our sinful habits. That's right. We're about to turn a corner, as we always say here on Saturdays with Dave and Evelyn. And this one is, we must sincerely repent. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. So the very first step here we see is a sincere repentance. The word cleanse in 1 John 1, 9 is the same word for healing. So God can heal us from these poor habits that we've done. 
Before any Christian can defeat sinful habits, he must recognize them as sinful practices. If we fail to grasp this fundamental fact, we will not succeed in overcoming them. We must not endeavor to conquer our sinful habits just to alleviate guilt or soothe a troubled conscience. Our motive must not be based upon the compulsion or coaxing of others only. It must be based upon a sincere, godly conviction to please God and appropriate His cleansing power and forgiveness. Wow, Dave, that is, that is so important that we recognize that we must repent. We must recognize that it is a sinful practice and that we must repent for the right motive because we have godly conviction that what we're doing is wrong and displeases the Lord and we want to please Him. Key word, sincerely repent. You know, uh, feeling repentful is not the same as actually repenting because repentance is an action. That's a very good point, Dave. Well, here's something interesting about the nature of sin. First of all, you see it, you covet it, you take it, and then you hide it. Wow, that's what's been happening ever since the Garden of Eden. They saw the fruit, they coveted it, took it, then they tried to hide from God. So on this point, instead of hiding, we need to repent, Mm -hmm. confess our sin, and turn away from it. So step one was... We must sincerely repent. Number two is, we must appropriate God's power. Before we can bring God's power to bear upon the problem, we must recognize that we have a problem. If we ignore it, minimize it, or overlook it, our sinful habit will only reinforce itself. And that's the thing with the habit, Dave. The more you do it, the more you have a tendency to do it. We must identify the habit and give careful consideration to its nature, frequency, and occurrences. When we have given proper attention to the problem area, we can begin to wage successful warfare against it. That's such a great point. We have to acknowledge its hold on our lives and then give our habits an eviction notice or give them an expiration date. I like that. Those are word pictures for me. After isolating the problem, we should begin to attack it through persistent prayer. If we begin to draw upon the power of Christ through prayer, he will impart the necessary strength. We must not rely upon our own might, but upon the divine resources of the Holy Spirit to combat our sinful habits So, Dave, a number of words associated with war, like waging warfare against our habits and then combating our sinful habits. And I really like this idea, Dave, that it'd be very thoughtful that we're appropriating God's power. So we're not relying on our own strength, but we're relying on the strength of the Lord. And a prayer, of course, is a key way to do that. I have one more Bible verse for us that would be really encouraging, taken from Proverbs 28, 13. The one who covers his sin will not prosper. The one that confesses it and forsakes it, that person will have mercy. Great verse for us to remember when we're confronted with these bad habits. We're getting ready for a station break. I want you to listen to our Christian Karate ministry. Call us up if you want to learn self-defense this year. Hi, this is Dave. And Evelyn Pearson. We host a radio program here on AM 1160 WYLL every Saturday morning from 8 to 9 a.m. It's called Saturdays with Dave and Evelyn. The program surveys the Bible and plays beautiful music to address a weekly theme. Saturdays with Dave and Evelyn seeks to bless, challenge, and inspire its listeners to a closer walk with God and to trust Him for every aspect of their lives. We have launched a website to enrich your experience in listening to our program, www.saturdays with Dave and Evelyn.org. The website will include the previous week's broadcast and information including Bible verses for the upcoming program. We have included some of our most popular programs, Building Self-Esteem God's Way and Conquering Condemnation. From the website, you can contact us directly with program comments or suggestions, as well as advertising and sponsorship interests. And link to our Facebook, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Google Plus, and Twitter pages. Visit us on our website today, www.saturdayswithdaveandevelyn.org.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome. This is Saturdays with Dave and Evelyn, and we're talking about breaking bad habits. I hope you're encouraged, and my wife and I are practicing these as well for the new year. So thank the Lord for this opportunity to be with you. And we have a great song. I want you to hear the words of this great song by Steve Green. It's called, He Holds the Keys. Think of the things that have held us back last year. And now we can be set free because God gives us the liberating keys in life. We'll be right back. Death rides blackened clouds across the sky the son of man lays down to die with every pounding blow upon the nail thunder crumbles all through From death's barren womb, the captives cry. Who is there to free us should he die? His grave becomes a door, he enters in to face the author.
Steve Green very powerfully singing, He Holds the Keys. We have that from his ultimate collection. I love the words in that song where it talks about he's changed the locks <laughs> and the old keys won't work anymore. So thank the Lord that he's the one that can do it. Trust the Lord to set you free today, dear friend. You'll be so glad you did. So we are talking about breaking bad habits. We're using some material by Christian Equippers International. By the way, we should mention that we've placed these outline of this program onto our website, www.saturdayswithdaveandevelyn.org. So we have the outline and the scripture verses there. Well, we're continuing on our talk, and the next point that we're going to make here is number three, we must strive for change. That's right. We're looking at eight scriptural steps for achieving a complete and permanent victory over sinful habits. So striving for change is essential. The scriptures teach us that change is a vital part of our development in Christ. And we see that in 2 Corinthians 3.18, where it says that we are being transformed into the image of Jesus with ever-increasing glory. Isn't that a wonderful thought? Mm -hmm. The process of change is a fundamental requirement for overcoming sinful habits. Without change, our habits will continue to persist. However, change must be more than just attempting to stop practicing a sinful habit. Many attempt this form of change without lasting success. Change must involve more than saying no. Change isn't just a matter of willpower, human resolve, or sheer determination. It isn't turning over a new leaf or making bold promises to quit. Quitting is not change. This is only a halfway response, which only provides halfway results. If this is all we do to change, our change will only be temporary. Isn't that interesting? It says here, quitting is not change. That is interesting, Dave. That's really something to think about, because a lot of times you think that quitting is change. Scriptural change involves a twofold process. Real change isn't just stopping sinful habits, but replacing them with godly ones. So it's saying that to quit is only step one. You also need to replace them. Only when we begin to change our practices and relearn positive habits can we really achieve lasting victory. Paul points out this twofold process in Colossians 3, 8 through 10. And it's reminiscent of our program, Dave, about putting on the new. We looked at putting off the old and putting on the new. So Paul encourages us to put on the new man. This putting off is the negative side of change. This is important, but in itself, insufficient. We must also apply the positive side of change, which involves the putting on of biblical alternatives. This is the key to successful change. So that's what I've said before about the scripture is so great. The Bible doesn't just say, don't do that, but it says, do this instead. Mm -hmm. We must begin to restructure our lives according to the word of God, the Bible. We must change in the right directions. Here's a German proverb, I think, that sort of goes here. To change and to improve are two different things. Good point. Here's Ellen Glasgow's take on all change is not growth, as all movement is not forward. So I guess you can sort of ricochet through life. That's not going to work very well. <laughs> be very thoughtful about your change. Yes. Number four, be filled with the Spirit of God. Wow, that's what I'm asking the Lord to do when it comes to habits in my life. Lord, you be the super in my natural do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. It's in Ephesians 5.18. This illustrates both positive and negative side of change. That's right. Instead of allowing ourselves to be dominated by old habits, we should strive for the Holy Spirit to be the prevailing influence in our lives on a daily basis. Wow, Dave, that's a... Huge aspiration, the prevailing influence in our lives. So when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, with His presence, we receive the necessary strength, support, and willpower to successfully overcome the lust of the flesh, taken from Galatians 5, 16 through 17. We must replace our old habits with constructive alternatives. 
Paul reveals some of the practical steps for accomplishing this in verses 19 and 20 of Ephesians chapter 5. So he says to speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we receive Jesus as our Savior, we believe the Holy Spirit comes to reside in us, but we do need to be constantly filled with the Spirit. I've heard some people describe that we leak a little bit, so we need to constantly be refreshed in our spirit. Amen. Rely on the Spirit's control. Well, how about number five? Apply the cleansing power of the Word. The Word of God is our cleansing power as well. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your Word. Psalms 119, 9. That's right, and so can all of us, whatever age and whatever gender. The Word provides an effective source of cleansing for our old ways. In referring to God's desire for His church, Paul stated to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the Word. The Word is a cleansing agent of our thoughts, desires, and inclinations. And Philippians 4, 8 is a great one to remember, to commit to memory. Whatever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report, think on these things. Wow. We're going to a station break. We're talking about breaking bad habits, talking about going to a break. And we'll be back to continue our talk and wrap this up. Keep up your guard for Christ, says Reverend Dave Pearson, a fifth-degree black belt in karate who uses biblical principles and martial arts to teach students to develop a physical and spiritual guard. Are you looking for a Christian-based martial arts program? There may be one near you. Masters Academy has nine locations in the Chicagoland area. Hi, this is Karate Dave. I've been teaching in the Chicagoland area for over 20 years, and my course details include basic self-defense training with Christian living applications and weekly Bible challenge and prayer to inspire a closer walk with Christ. This unique system of martial arts unites Tang Soo Do Karate, Judo, Jiu Jitsu Sport Karate, and street survival techniques that provide a fast, effective method of self-defense. Come visit the class for yourself and find out why so many Christian families have made Masters of Academy, the believer's choice. Call today, 630-567-9188. Visit my website at karatedave.org. Welcome back. This is Pastor Dave and my wonderful wife, Evelyn, right here in the studio. We're talking about breaking bad habits. I hope this was an encouragement to you so far. And you can get this information if you'd like. At the end of our show, there'll be information about that. Evelyn and I love playing music with children singing. And here's one for that. Come to the water. Come to the water. Refresh your soul.
That was Come to the Water by Kids Own Worship. And that was from their winter 2007 to 2008 children's church. I love the words in there where it says, He will make your life whole. Jesus can do it. Amen. That's what we're looking at right now. We're looking at breaking bad habits, and Jesus can help us with that. So we're in the midst of eight scriptural steps for achieving a complete and permanent victory over sinful habits. So here's step six. We must bring our habits under subjection. 1 Corinthians 9.27 says, But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I preach to others, I myself become disqualified. That was the Apostle Paul there using some Mm -hmm. boxing imagery. Yeah. We must exercise a firm hand in disciplining our sinful habits. The tendency to participate with our old ways must be confronted and suppressed. If we allow our minds to fantasize, flirt with, or entertain the possible justifications of sinful habits, we will suffer defeat. So I get from this, Evelyn... Don't believe everything you think. (laughs) That's right. Victory depends upon decisive action. When we are tempted to continue a sinful habit, we must challenge the desire with the Word of God. The temptation should also serve as a warning signal to drive us to the Lord in prayer. Our determination to promptly confront our habits when they arise is an effective safeguard against failure. I tell young people all the time to keep up their guard through Bible reading and prayer. Praise the Lord. Well, here's number seven. We must form right relationships. The scripture reveals the destructive power of wrong relationships. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. It was from 1 Corinthians 15.33. Harmful relationships only reinforce sinful habits. We see in Proverbs 22, 24, and 25 that we should not make friends with a hot-tempered person or somebody who's easily angered because we might learn their ways and be ensnared. Yeah. In this sense, a man is known by the company he avoids, not the company he keeps as well. Old friendships and associations can be destructive influences. Our old hangouts can also create compromising situations for those endeavoring to overcome sinful habits. This fact demands a godly alternative. We must terminate those associations which hinder us and surround ourselves with healthy relationships which reinforce godliness. We must strengthen the ties of Christian fellowship and center our activities around the church. Good reference for that is Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. So number eight says, we must not give up. A just man falls seven times and rises up again. Proverbs 24, 16. In the process of striving for victory, we may occasionally fall short. However, we must rise up and continue to press on. So whatever you do, don't give up. We must persevere in order to achieve victory. We must not allow our failures to discourage, frustrate, or disillusion us. They must not cause us to give up. It takes time to reestablish godly alternatives. There is no such thing as instant success. It takes about 30 days to relearn a godly habit. Therefore, persistence and determination are essential. You know, sweetheart, I was thinking about this. Why doesn't God just zap us with victory? (laughs) Because maturity is a process, not an event. We must never entertain the spirit of quitting or defeat. We must press on in confidence that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Philippians 4.13 We must recognize that a lasting victory over sinful habits is guaranteed in Jesus Christ. We are not hopelessly bound to them. Change is possible if we will diligently apply 
these steps from the Word of God. So we want to revisit some of these that we went through already, all eight points. Number one, we must sincerely repent. Number two, we must appropriate God's power. Number three, we must strive for change. Number four, be filled with the Spirit. Number five is apply the cleansing power of the Word of God. Number six, we must bring our habits under subjection. Seven, we must form right relationships. Number eight, we must not give up. That's right, dear friend. Maybe you've been feeling like giving up. Put all of your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and he will save your soul. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That means you. Just like Steve Green sang for us so beautifully today, he can set the captives free. He can set us free from our sin and bondages to it and give us victory. That can happen for you today. Trust him. You'll be so glad you did. He loves you very much. He wants a relationship with you. And he does. He really has a great plan for your life. Amen. Thank you, Dave. If you'd like to listen to this program again, we will be posting it to the Dave Pearson YouTube channel. You can link to our YouTube page through our website, www.saturdayswithdaveandevelyn.org, or from our Facebook page, our Google Plus page, or our Pinterest page. If you'd like to get noticed when we post, you can subscribe to YouTube, you can like us on Facebook, you can join our circle in Google Plus, or follow us on Pinterest. This has been Saturdays with Dave and Evelyn. Hope it was an encouragement to you. I'm encouraged, and we'll be right back with you next week at the same time. Take care. Thank you for being with us today. We hope it was an encouragement to you. If you're interested in a biblical approach to life in Christ, today's lesson is available to you. Visit our website, www.saturdayswithdaveandevelyn.org, or you may call Pastor Dave and Evelyn at 630-567-9188. Until next time, this has been Evelyn and Dave Pearson. May God's richest blessings be yours in the coming week.